Hello, everybody. You're listening to Let's Master English, and my name is Coach Shane. For me, right now, it is December 31st, 2013. The year is almost finished, and frankly speaking, I'm happy. 2013 was okay. We started the podcast. That was great. We started DDM. That was fantastic. I moved to the country. I really like that. But personally, for me, there were many troubles and difficulties. So, I am very determined to make 2014 not only a successful year regarding teaching English, but personally, too. How is or was your 2013? Did you achieve your goals? Do you have new goals and resolutions and plans for 2014. Well, I wish you the best of luck. You know, every year has its ups and downs. Ups are the good times, downs are the bad times. 2013, uh, I was about 50-50. 50% up, 50% down. 2012, down. 2011, down. 2010, down. 2009, down. 2008, down. So 2014 is going to be up. I'm positive it will be a good year. And I hope that 2014 is your greatest year ever. If any of your 2014 goals or resolutions are about English, then stay with me. I will continue to be your English coach. We have the podcast. We have my videos on YouTube. And I promise to make many more in 2014. 2013, yeah, not very productive. 2014, much more productive. So please stay with me. And if you're really serious about mastering English, then you have to join DDM. It is the best online English program out there, without a doubt. Uh, it depends on what you're looking for. If you want to try DDM, you can do that. You can just go to, and I guess I'll have to leave this address there. Go to www.letsmasterenglish.com slash DDM Santa. And you can put your email address, put your name and email address, sign up for the lessons, and you will get eight free DDM lessons. That's valuable. That's, that's, that's big money. But uh, I really believe in DDM, and uh, the DDM family is growing. So if you, ha if you can, if you're serious about English, you need to join. Okay, enough of that stuff. Let me say hi and thank you to uh, some of the people who left reviews on iTunes right now. Thank you, everybody. We have 155 star ratings. That's amazing. I'm so excited about that, and uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, what else do we have? We have some new reviews from people, and I want to introduce a couple of those. We have... Zen Martinez from Spain. And Zen says, best I've ever seen. Really great. Gracias, Zen. Then we have Antonio Rodriguez from Mexico. Excellent podcast again. I can't stop listening to your podcast. You are the best. Antonio, gracias. You are the best, man. Then we have Marlene Perez from France. Dear Coach Shane. Thank you for your LME podcasts and all the Lighting DD episodes. Merci beaucoup, Marlene. Lighting DD, what do you mean, Marlene? 
Send me an email. I'm curious, but thank you very much. From Ashwin in France. Please help. Hello, Cochin. I want to enter into an international class. There is a competition to enter, and my concurrents are almost fluent in English. What can I do? Ashwin from France. Well, Ashwin, to master English, to get fluent in English, it does take time. And once again, DDM is a good place to start, but if you want to do it on your own, do your best to combine writing, listening, speaking, and pronunciation, vocabulary, grammar. You have to combine all of it. I'm guessing for an international class, speaking is probably very important as well as listening. So Ashwin, especially concentrate on speaking and listening. Then we have Manuel79 from Italy. He says, uh, best ever. The best English is podcast you can find on the internet. My best congratulations to Coach Shane. Un saluto da Parma, Italy. Grazie, Manuel. I thank you very much for that lovely uh, salute. And then we have user Johnny from Russia. Cool. Good work, man. Thank you, user Johnny. I salute you. And you left a message on my birthday. I really appreciate that. Oh, and speaking of my birthday, we have a listener from China. And I cannot pronounce or read the Chinese characters. Ah, Ling Ching. Ling Ching says, happy birthday to you. Uh, uh, Jai Jian. No, Jai Jian is goodbye. Sure, sure. Sure, sure. Thank you very much to Ling Ching. Then we have Spain again. Is it Kema Caller or Kema Caller 84? Very useful and enjoyable. Great job, Coach Shane. It is really a brilliant podcast to improve your English skills. Thank you so much. Country Shane rules. Hold on a second. Let me call Country Shane. Hey, Country Shane. Yeah. Come here. All right. Yeah, let me see here. Oh, yeah. Country Shane rules. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Kima Caller. Well, I promise you that I will have a bigger corner in the future. I don't know what it's going to be, but uh, maybe I'll teach you some country English. Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, then we have Jose Gonzalez Aguila from the United States. Thank you. Coach Shane, thank you so much for the great job you've been doing. I really like your podcasts. It helps me improve my comprehension. I really appreciate it. I think I'm the first person in my country who have downloaded your podcast. Aha! Jose is not from the United States. A big hello from Guatemala. Wow! Excellent, Guatemala. Thank you so much. And yes, Jose, you might be, I think you are the first person from Guatemala to download, well, at least to leave a review. Thank you very much. And one more very nice podcast from Yeah Man 974 France. Thank you, Koshin. I like the way you teach us English. It's fun, interesting, and very helpful. Thierry from Reunion Island. Wow, the Reunion Island. This is a, a, a small island off the coast of Madagascar. Madagascar is a big island off Africa in the Indian Ocean. Thierry from Reunion Island, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. And thank you to everybody who leaves a rating and uh, leaves a review. Um, I read them all. I see them all. And it makes me so happy. Without you, I wouldn't be here. If you did not leave a rating or a comment, then why should I make a podcast? It would be a waste of time. But no, I see. Thanks to your comments and your ratings. Uh, I love it. I really enjoy making the podcasts. And uh, I'm so happy that you enjoy them. Thank you. Okay, it is time for some news. Are you ready? Looking forward to anything in 2014? 
here are a few things that might pop up a lot and even become the norm. 3D printing shops, algae, Bitcoin ATMs, breath analysis, Oculus Rift, Sochi, verified reviewers, and wearable tech. Any of those take your fancy? What would you add to this list of things to watch for in 2014? So, how was it? Yep, some new expressions maybe, some difficult words perhaps. Let me read it slower. Listen carefully. Looking forward to anything in 2014? Here are a few things that might pop up a lot and even become the norm. 3D printing shops, algae, Bitcoin ATMs, breath analysis, Oculus Rift, Sochi, verified reviewers, and wearable tech. Any of those take your fancy? What would you add to this list of things to watch for in 2014? Hmm, all right, so it's a list of things that we might hear about in the year 2014. Looking forward to are, now grammatically we should say, are you looking forward to anything in 2014? So looking forward to, are you excited about something? Is there something you can't wait for? Are you excited about anything in 2014? Are you looking forward to anything in 2014? So we can say 2014 and 2014. But the faster we say it, we don't say 20, we say 20. 2014, 2014. When we say 14, we should keep the T sound. Looking forward to anything in 2014? Here are a few things that might pop up a lot and even become the norm. So, might, perhaps, possibly. Uh, here are a few things that might pop up a lot. So, what does pop up mean? P-O-P-U-P. -P -P. It's a phrasal verb. And it means occur, emerge. Maybe you will hear about them on the news. Maybe some of your friends will talk about them. Maybe you'll read about it in the internet or on the internet. You might see a sign or a magazine article about these subjects. They just, boom, pop up. Suddenly, here they are. Here are a few things that might pop up a lot and even, in this case even, has the meaning of also, it emphasizes also, become the norm. To become something, become the norm, N-O-R-M, norm is the noun version of normal, regular, every day, nothing special. So. Right now, well, in 2013, at the beginning of 2014, these things on the list are not really normal. But by the end of the year, they might be normal. You might see them everywhere. You might hear about them all the time. What are these things that might pop up in 2014? The first one on the list was 3D printing shops. 3D, three-dimensional. I'm sure you've heard of 3D printers. An amazing technology. They can print things 
in plastic, and I believe they have the ability to print things in alloys or a type of metal. But have you ever seen one? Have you ever seen a store that offers 3D printing? Well, in 2014, when you're driving down the street or walking down the street, you might see a store that offers 3D printing services. So 3D printing shops might pop up and they might become the norm. The second thing on the list was algae, A-L-G-A-E. Algae is that green stuff that you see in the summertime growing on a pond or on the lake. And I believe you can see it in the ocean too. Algae is a, a type of plant and most people, when they see algae, they don't want to go swimming. Algae. It feels very slimy, very slippery. However, scientists are researching many things about algae. Could algae become a type of food? Maybe for animals, maybe for humans. And also, scientists are researching algae as an alternative fuel. I do know that scientists have successfully changed algae into oil. Can you imagine that? So, algae might be a word that you hear pop up a lot in 2014. And then there's Bitcoin, Bitcoin ATMs. So in 2013, if you've been watching the news, you've probably heard a lot about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is basically an online currency, a type of money used online. It's becoming quite popular and many people are starting to use Bitcoin. But what might become the norm are Bitcoin ATMs. Now, an ATM is an automated teller machine. It's a cash machine, a cash dispenser. When you need cash, you go to this machine, you insert your bank card, and then you can withdraw cash. So Bitcoin ATMs might start popping up, especially in the big cities. Hmm, that'll be interesting. The next thing on the list, breath analysis. So analysis is the noun form of analyze and analyze means to look at and study something very carefully. What are we looking at? What are we studying very carefully? Breath. B-R-E-A-T-H. <sighs> Oof, that smells bad. <laughs> Just joking. My breath smells like flowers. <laughs> <clears throat> So, what is breath analysis? Well, scientists believe that by analyzing your breath, they can discover disease, maybe cancers, maybe other illnesses, and they might be able to help treat you. That would be very handy. No more shots, no more trips to the doctor. You could just buy a breath analysis machine and check your health every day. Sounds kind of cool. Breath analysis. That might start popping up in 2014. On the list next was Oculus Rift. Okay, if you like 
video games, then you have probably heard of Oculus Rift. Oculus Rift is, it looks like goggles, very large glasses that you wear. And once you put on these goggles or glasses, you are inside the computer world. You're inside the video game. It's three-dimensional, it covers every angle, and it's in HD. Oculus Rift might have a huge year in 2014, especially for the gamers. Sochi, S-O-C-H-I. Sochi is the city in Russia, Mother Russia, and Sochi will be hosting the Winter Olympics coming up very soon. So yes, without a doubt, we will start hearing a lot about Sochi and uh, best wishes to Russia on the Winter Olympics. And I hope the athletes have a great time. And anybody who can visit Sochi, oh, it sounds wonderful. We have some DDM members from Sochi. Max lives and works in Sochi. And Max is also responsible for helping me get my website, letsmasterenglish.com, up and running. So forever, I owe gratitude to Max. Max, you must be excited about the Sochi Olympics. It'll be a great chance, I think, to practice the English that you've learned. The next one was verified reviewers. So verified means checked, authenticated. This person is real. This is a real person. They are, they're doing a proper job. Reviewer. What is a reviewer? It's a person who looks at a product or a service and gives their opinion. This is a good product. This is a bad product. You have restaurant reviewers. This is a delicious restaurant. This is a terrible restaurant. So a reviewer is just like a critic. Critic, C-R-I-T-I-C. But did you ever go to the internet to look at something a reviewer says or a critic says? They say the restaurant is so delicious. And then you go to the restaurant and it's terrible. The service is terrible. The food is terrible. You're very angry because that reviewer or that critic basically lied to you. So it's sometimes difficult to trust the reviewers. So in 2014, you will hear a lot about verified reviewers, and that means critics you can trust. And the last on the list was wearable tech. Wearable. W-E-A-R-A-B-A. -A -A. I'm sorry, A-B-L-E. Wear able. Something you are able to wear. Tech. T-E-C-H. That's short for technology. Wearable tech. Aha. Well, the obvious example would be the Google glasses. I'm sure you've heard about those. And many athletes have a watch that can check their pulse. And some of them even have GPS. So they can map the distance and the routes that they run or cycle on. There's lots of different types of wearable tech, but it hasn't been too common. However, in 2014, wearable tech might pop up a lot and even become the norm. So those were the things on the list. And then the last two sentences. 
any of those take your fancy? So grammatically, did any of those take your fancy? So take, T-A-K-E, your fancy, F-A-N-C-Y. We say take your fancy, catch your fancy. Uh, there are many possible variations. Something, something, your fancy, take your fancy means interest you. Any of those interest you? After hearing that list, did any of those items interest you? Are you interested in any of those 3D printing shops? Me? Uh, not really. Algae? Mm, a little bit. Bitcoin ATMs? Yeah, a little bit. Breath analysis? Yeah, maybe. Oculus Rift? No, I'm not a gamer. Sochi? Sure, I love the Olympics. Verified reviewers? Yes, it's hard to find good reviewers. And wearable tech? Yes, I'm interested in wearable tech, especially sports watches. So any of those take your fancy? Yes, for me, yes. What about you? And the last sentence, what would you add, ADD, to this list of things to watch for in 2014? Things to watch for, things to be on the lookout for, things to pay attention to, things to watch for, things that might come up, you should recognize those things. What would you add? So we have 3D printing shops, algae, Bitcoin, breath analysis, Oculus Rift, Sochi, verified reviewers, and wearable tech. What else would you add to this, to this list? And if you have something to add to the list, tell us. Use Facebook. Use our Google Plus community, Let's Master English. Use our website, letsmasterenglish.com, if there is something that you think we need to add to this list. Okay, so that's the story. Not too difficult, but there were some difficult expressions and some new words. So the first expression again, looking forward to, excited about something. I'm looking forward to 2014. I hope it's a great year. Pop up. If something pops up, it suddenly occurs. It emerges out of nowhere. Become the norm. If something becomes the norm, it becomes normal. It becomes an everyday thing. Cell phones are the norm. And nowadays, smartphones are the norm. Take your fancy. If something takes your fancy, it means it interests you. You are interested in it. And things to watch for. Things to be on the lookout for. Things that you should hear and recognize. Those were the key expressions. And the list again, 3D printing shops, algae, yeah, that spelling is confusing, A-L-G-A-E, but the pronunciation in America, algae, Bitcoin ATMs, breath analysis, Oculus Rift, Sochi, verified reviewers, wearable tech. Okay, I'm going to read the news two more times, slowly, nice and slow, and then normal. Are you ready? Looking forward to anything in 2014? Here are a few things that might pop up a lot and even become the norm. 3D printing shops, algae, Bitcoin ATMs, breath analysis, Oculus Rift, Sochi, verified reviewers, and wearable tech. Any of those take your fancy? What would you add to this list of 
things to watch for in 2014. Looking forward to anything in 2014? Here are a few things that might pop up a lot and even become the norm. 3D printing shops, algae, Bitcoin ATMs, breath analysis, Oculus Rift, Sochi, verified reviewers, and wearable tech. Any of those take your fancy? What would you add to this list of things to watch for in 2014? It's question and answer time. On Facebook, I asked you guys to give me some questions about listening or pronunciation. Those are my specialties. And we got a couple of questions. So let's go ahead and start. Jefferson Dos Santos Oliveira asks a question about phrasal verbs. Can you make some videos? Yeah, phrasal verbs are super important, Jefferson. And I will make many more videos, especially on E-Cubed. That YouTube channel has lots of videos. Every day we try to put out a video and many of those videos are about phrasal verbs. So the key to thing to remember with a phrasal verb is you have an action verb like run, R-U-N, <laughs> to run, and then you have a preposition, like on, O-N, run on, or by, B-Y, run by, or over, O-V-E-R, run over, run on, run by, run over. Now, the key is to imagine that verb and imagine the body language involved with the preposition or try to imagine a scene, some sort of activity, run on. So the idea of on is on, it continues. If something is on, it continues. Run on means usually this situation. Your sentences are running on. Your sentences continue too long. You're talking too much. Your sentence is too long. That's the idea. Run over. So over means it has some movement and then up and down. Over. To run over something means, for example, you're driving a car and in the middle of a street is an egg and you drive over the egg. You run, ran over the egg. In this case, ran over. I ran over the egg. I'm sorry to run over. And to run by. I'm going to run by the store. The idea of run by is you're running quickly. By, by is like next to the store. So run by the store means you're going to run by the store and stop inside just for a second to buy maybe a candy bar or some milk, something like that. You're not going to shop for a long period of time. It's just for a short period of time. So if you can imagine the verb and think about the preposition, its location or its movement or some body language connected to those, they're easier to remember and they become lots of fun. So Jefferson, once again, I promise to make many more videos about phrasal verbs, okay? Francesco Tosini asked me to make a podcast about safety on the job or perhaps something that we can expect from science in the 21st century. Well, Francesco, today's news story was a little bit about what we can expect from science in the future. I'm especially thinking about the algae story. So I know it's not much, but I hope it was somewhat interesting. Miguel A. Nunes Mestre. And we call him Coach Miguel. Coach Miguel, our DDM uh, coach, he's doing a great job. 
Now, he asked the question about the T, and he says, we all know that the N sound is strong, and it cancels the T, which is a weak sound. Yes, in America, that is generally true. For example, international, most Americans say international. He continues, but there's never a perfect rule. I agree. We always find exceptions to the rule. Yes. For example, the verb maintain, M-A-I-N-T-A-I-N. That's right. We say maintain and we always keep the T sound. We don't say maintain. We say maintain, 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 keep the T sound. But the noun version, maintenance, M-A-I-N-T-E-N-A-N-C-E, usually has a glottal stop T. Maintenance, maintenance. We stop back of the throat and hit the end. Maintenance. Yes, that's very correct. And his question is, so the word maintenance, the T is not canceled, but we usually use a glottal stop T. Is it true that perfect pronunciation is three syllables and the fast pronunciation is two syllables. Yes, that's absolutely true. Maintenance, maintenance, three syllables. Maintenance, maintenance, two syllables. We can also say maintenance, maintenance. But if you go to America and listen to most Americans when they say that word, they do say maintenance. Call the maintenance office. Ask the maintenance guy. Maintenance. That's a great question. And finally, Ah Satuno asks, Are you going to quit cigarettes next year? I suggest that you take your time now. Sit on an armchair by the ocean, listen to classical music, look at the seagulls, and smoke all the cigarettes you can. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. You know what? Yes, I am quitting. I'm going to quit cigarettes. I'm doing my best, and uh, I've been successful so far. My strategy has been reduce the number of cigarettes by one every day. And right now, once again, it's December 31st. I'm on, is it 11 cigarettes or 12 cigarettes? Ah, today is... I can smoke 12 cigarettes. It's 9.48 p.m. and I still have five cigarettes to smoke. So I have smoked seven cigarettes today. I have five more to go. It should be no problem. Tomorrow, the 1st of January, 2014, I can smoke 11 cigarettes. On the 2nd of January, 10 cigarettes. And it will go down. So I do hope that you guys are wishing for me. I do want to quit in 2014. One of my big resolutions, my big plans, is to run in triathlons. I want to do triathlons again. Do you know what triathlons are? That's where you swim, cycle, and run. Now, there are many different types of triathlons. I want to do what they call sprint triathlons. And sprint triathlons are about 750 meters swimming, 20 or 25 kilometers cycling, and 5 kilometers running. And my goal, the first triathlon I will run will be in April. And my goal is to finish in two hours. But my real goal, my secret goal, is to get under 90 minutes. And I know I won't for the first one, but maybe by the end of the year, I'll be down to less than 90 minutes. However, if I'm going to be successful, I must stop smoking 
and I do want to. That's one reason I want to stop smoking, and there are other reasons. So that's my New Year's resolution, one of them to quit smoking. Thank you very much for that lovely advice. Smoke all you want, and then stop. How you doing, everybody? This is Country Shane, and I'm here to bring you the facts. Hey, everybody. Are you trying to lose some weight in 2014? Not moving your arms while walking increases your effort by 12%. That's the same as walking 20% faster or carrying a 10 kilogram backpack. <laughs> so don't move your arms while you walk and you're going to burn more calories. Of course, you're going to look stupid, but who cares? You'll be skinny and stupid. <laughs> this has been Country Shane bringing you the facts. Well, everybody, it is almost 2014. Ah, oh, boy. If you're listening to this podcast, it might already be 2014. Happy New Year, everybody. It's such a great honor for me to have met you through this podcast and on my YouTube channels. Um, I really sincerely value uh, your listening, and I take my job coaching English, I take it very seriously. I really want to be the best coach you've ever had. I don't call myself a teacher. I don't have a teaching license. I didn't learn the proper methods to teach. Uh, but I've helped thousands of people build their confidence in English. I've helped them build their skills, especially listening skills and pronunciation skills and cultural skills. Those are my areas of expertise and I'm here for you. If you want to work on your listening comprehension, if you want to work on your pronunciation, of course the typical American pronunciation, if you want to build your confidence in English, I'm your man, Coach Shane. Not Couch Shane, Coach Shane, C-O-A-C-H. <laughs> Some people call me Couch Shane. I guess I'm very comfortable. So I'm your man for 2014 and beyond. I hope that you have a fantastic 2014 to you and your family. Remember, be nice. Be as nice as you can. Remember to enjoy giving more than receiving. I think those are some good rules to try and live by. And if you can do it, you'll probably be pretty happy. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to start with you guys. I'll be as nice as I can to you guys, and I'll give as much as I can to you guys. Happy New Year, and uh, let's make 2014 rock, huh? Take care, and let's master English.